Everybody, uh, this time we're going to be going over a couple of new things here, and this is adding a few fixtures and then adding a few actual scenes to go with those fixtures. So let's just dive right in. You're going to go open up your QLC and go right here to the little par can, which is the fixture manager. As you can see, it popped up said fixtures. Go ahead and click that. Now we're going to add today a couple of just par cans. So let's add fixture. That's the plus button. And we'll go to American DJ only because I already have the Par 38 Pro. You can go to whatever actual par cans you have, or really any fixture in general. There are a lot of them in here. If they're not already in here, then you can create them through the fixture creator, which we'll go through in a different tutorial. Alright, so I'm going to add four. We're going to set it at address one because I don't have any before this. And we're going to go ahead and put this into six channel mode. Because here I want red, green, blue for RGB color mixing. As well as the ability to put in just straight up color macros to make it easier. To be able to strobe it and to have automated color changes. <clears throat> now I'm going to add four of them. Three, four. And put no address gap between them. So, in other words, the first one should have address 1, and then it should take up 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, so number 2 will be address 7, and so on and so forth. If I put an address gap in here, then it would take up channels 1 through 6, and have a 7 being blank, and 8 starting as the next fixture. But we don't want to do that, at least I don't. So address gap 0, and I'm going to press OK. Now see, they show up right in here and you have different things that you can do with this. I find it's much easier during my programming as far as addressing to make sure that I have everything set right here. Address 1 and then I go to the console and do something like this, you know, go to red and check to make sure that each one in particular is working. Now I don't have any hooked up at this point in time physically so there's no real need for me to do that. So now that those have been added you can click your little X here for close, not the big X, the little one underneath, and that'll close your fixture manager. Then you're going to go to the gear. The gear is your function manager, and that's where you're going to be putting in the different scenes that you have, you know, set positions for moving heads or colors, etc. Uh, so we're going to hit this. This right here is the scene button. That's one solid scene, so one color one position to a moving head, etc. We'll go over the rest of these guys in later tutorials. So, we're going to hit new scene, and we're going to call this one red, because I'm going to make all the park hands red. So now I hit this plus button to add in fixtures. Now you can just click on one and drag your mouse up, and that'll select all of them in that entire row, or really all of them in, you know, if you have more than that, you got to be a little careful with that. But you go ahead and click that, and then press OK. That'll allow you to select all four. I'm sorry, that's what the point I was getting at. So now you're going to go to each one here in their tabs. And if there's no check mark, it means that this particular scene doesn't affect it. And I like to leave it that way. I don't like to turn these guys on if I don't need to. So I turn them off, uh, leave them off. And I'm going to turn this to color macro, and we're going to go to red. So we're going to go to eight. That's red. Now over here, this right here is strobe speed. We don't want it to strobe, so we're just going to leave that one off. And the same with this, which is color chasing. We don't want it to color chase, so again, we're going to leave that off. Now, I remember this is 8, so I don't have to click it each time. Either you can do that and just click it, or you just go ahead and enable it and type the actual number in. Now once those are all in, you press OK, and you see you have your scene red. Now we're going to create another one, we'll just call this one blue. And we're going to do basically the exact same thing. Click and hold my clicker down on that, and drag down, and that selects all of them in the row. And we're going to go back to here, we're going to enable this one. Like I said, these three were RGB, so it was only red, green and blue, 0 to 100%. But I don't want to color mix with this one, which is why I'm using the built-in color macro. So we're going to go to blue, we'll pick 18. And again, you can either continue like this, and just add it in via the dropouts, or you can type in the number. 
either way, whichever you prefer. And once again, I don't want to change what it, the way it's strobing or doing anything like that, so I'm going to leave these completely turned off. If I wanted it to be solid all the time and never strobing, then I could go like this and leave this one specifically at zero because zero is nothing. Okay, so now with this in mind, now we have red and blue as our colors. Now what I was saying earlier about leaving scenes that you don't need, uh, or I'm sorry, leaving channels that you don't need off in that scene, that's where we're going to cover right here, because red and blue just change what color the output is, but it doesn't change, for example, the intensity or anything like that. So I'm going to make one called Solid. And I'm going to add in my fixtures again by click and hold and dragging down. Press OK. I'm going to go here. Let's see, we have Blackout is uh, 0 to 15. I believe on this particular fixture, most fixtures it's a little bit more defined, but I believe on this one 255 is solid on. Okay, and I'm going to do that again with all of these. Again, you can drag the slider up if you'd like, or type it in, or click your dropout menu and select 255. So, a couple ways you can do that. Now you press OK. Now you see we have solid, red, and blue. And, uh, then I'll go ahead and make one final one, and we're going to call it Blackout. And we're going to add, once again, our fixtures. Click and drag. Press OK. And now I'm going to change this one back to Blackout at zero. So because I don't need to move it, I can just enable it and leave it at zero. Now this Blackout and Solid are not going to change the colors at all. They're just going to decide whether the light is at full intensity or whether it's not producing any light. Red and blue are going to change the color if it's on solid. If it's on blackout, obviously they'll do nothing. Now, the last thing we have to get done in order to have a completely working system, going to close our function manual, uh, manager, I'm sorry, and hit this. It's called the virtual console. You click that and over here you have a couple things we'll go over at a later time. You're not going to need those for the basic stuff if you're using, for example, uh, RGB, uh, DMX, LED par cans and things of that nature, or just straight up dimmer systems. Uh, you won't need these much at all. So now we're going to go ahead and add a button, and we'll add four of them. We have four uh, things, so they sometimes spawn on top of each other. Sorry about that. Oops, one too many. Yes. Okay. Now I'm going to double click this. And we're going to call, well, the, the function should automatically fill in button label, but you can change it if you'd like. So we're going to go ahead and give it solid. Okay. See how it changes up here to solid. And the cool part about this, you can set key combinations on your keyboard. So we're going to do that. We're going to make solid Z. I just picked a random letter there. There's really no anything. You can, you can choose any key you like as long as you know what it's doing and then go ahead and press OK. And now you see this button here is solid, and that's going to control that solid scene that we made earlier. Now we're going to make another one over here, and do the same thing for the other three scenes. Blackout, key combination, I'm just going to do X because it's right next to Z, it makes them easy to remember they're next to each other. And then this one will make red, and we'll put that as the letter R for red. And this one right here, We'll make blue. And we're going to make this one B for blue. Press OK. Now, you see we can we can change the size of these buttons any way we'd like to. We can place them anywhere. We can put them inside small containers. And I'll go a lot more in depth on what we can do inside the virtual console here uh, at a later date. So, we're just going to put these buttons all right by each other. All right, now. Assuming you have your universe set up, which we set up last time in the last tutorial, and you have your hardware plugged in, your universe set up, your lights connected and powered on, the last thing you would need to do to get running is go ahead and click this little button over here, the blue play button. Once you click that, you're in play mode, which means it's sending out signal, DMX, out your hardware and to your lights. So we're going to go ahead and click solid, and solid is going to make it so that they can actually produce light. Now we're going to hit red or blue. So we'll go with red. 
and so now if you have everything set up properly your park hand should now be at a hundred percent intensity blasting out red light and if you click blue here it should now be blasting out blue light and blackout should turn that light back off so that's the basics of how to get a very basic system running again real quick you run through here click that button add in your fixtures once your fixtures have been added in you go to your functions and you create your functions whichever ones you'd like to make and then once you have your functions made up you go to your virtual console button and you create buttons which you double click and add your function to the functions that you just created and that's basically all you need to do in order to get a perfectly working system and that's the basics of it I hope you'll join me next time we're gonna be going over a little bit more in depth how to add in for example movements through the EFX system and a little bit more in depth on how to really stylize your virtual console so I hope you enjoyed thank you for watching